so let's talk about what's the best way to to apply a uh, no matter what kind of ozonator you're using where is there a certain place it should be placed in the car in general there's a lot of different scenarios there but for just safety purposes and so forth and in generality how do you guys do it well we elevate it uh, roughly 18 inches off the floor and always place some type of protective uh, pad, cloth, garment, something underneath uh, the ozone generator so as not to scar the, the feet of it, doesn't scar the, uh, the console or the leather seats. It doesn't matter if it's facing backwards, frontwards, sideways. As long as the obstruction, as long as there are no obstructions on the intake or outlet of the machine so that the ozone can get out and disperse throughout the car. And I would not put it on a very close proximity to a navigation system in some of the higher end cars. Uh, just as a precaution, I don't know that it would harm anything. I, I've never had an issue with it. Uh, however, Rick has treated a lot, uh, a lot more vehicles than I have. So what's your take on that? Uh, exactly, just what exactly what Jerry said. Central location. Use common sense in keeping the uh, ozone not too close to any sensitive navigational equipment, things like that. Um, many people don't know that ozone is actually heavier than air, and as a result, it tends to sink down like cold air. So what you want to do is you want to elevate the unit about 18 inches off the off the floor. You don't want to put it on the floor. So on the back seat, center console is fine. As Jerry said, it doesn't matter if it's facing forward or backward or or sideways. Just central location. Uh, pretty much common sense. If we're going to have it on a seat of a car, uh, we're going to put some kind of canvas drop over the, yeah. the, the upholstery or leather. Mm -hmm. Just just to protect it. Just uh, to, just as a precaution. Again, I mean, even on on any ozone appliance, uh, you, you got these little rubber feet on the bottom or something. You just don't want to, you know, if you can get, put a little padding down there so you don't put an indentation in the fabric. So in general, get it elevated. Um, for years, we've had real true success with ozone. We've always <clears> used <throat> that exact method. And it's kind of funny because it works. We all haven't known each other that long, but just good common sense goes a long way. It sure does. So yep. use good common sense and uh, be safe with your ozonator. Yep. Yeah, Rennie, this is an eco-sensor. It is an instrument that measures uh, ozone in parts per million. Uh, it is used by several agencies around the country. Some federal agencies, OSHA individuals use them uh, to measure the parts per million in an interior area to make sure that it's safe for entry. According to EPA standards, uh, 0.05 parts per million is the limit. They don't like to see ozone go any higher than that in an interior area. However, in nature we see out here that today it must be an ozone action day because we're at 0 0.04, 0 0.05, it's fluctuating. But this is normal ozone levels for uh, being outside and that's what this eco sensor is used for. Uh, we're going to use it to measure the parts per million generated by some equipment today in, uh, in a vehicle. So here's the inside view. Again, a completely different look. Now we're climbing up. Okay, so let's talk a second, Jerry, about now we, we had the Corona based system in here before. That was the, the, the model that I've, I've been using for years. Now we've got a, a UV based system in, uh, smaller unit, more compact unit. Uh, we know what is in the Corona base. So we're not just, we're not just creating ozone, we're creating ozone and uh, nitrogen oxide, uh, oh, and the Corona base, that's what we're creating. This one, it is as clean of ozone that you can get. Okay. I can't call it pure ozone, but it is close to as we can get without being in laboratory conditions. It's clean ozone, it does not produce the nitrogen oxides, it does not produce any of the other caustic materials other than ozone itself. Got ya. Now, what what on materials we've got inside? I mean, this is a BMW, um, any car. We've got um, materials, leather and plastics and vinyls and uh, hand lining material. We've got fabrics. What what is is there any benefit 
of either system with a UV based system, ultraviolet based ozone or uh, corona discharge ozone. Well, with the uh, UV clean ozone, you're going to have less of the uh, corrosive materials going in there. Any of the products are susceptible to high amounts of ozone for a prolonged period of time. I would not leave any ozone generator in a vehicle more than 24 hours. Oh, yeah. uh, because it is subject to uh, dulling the steering wheel. You have to remember, ozone attacks any carbon-based molecule. Just about everything we have is carbon-based. Depending upon uh, uh, the, the density of it is how susceptible. If you were to ozone a vehicle with any ozone equipment without cleaning the steering wheel, just simply the oil residue from your hands would become a very tacky agent that you could feel. Well, and it's even us as humans, we're carbon-based. I mean, right. we're, we're out gassing and that's right. why we got free radicals in our bodies and all these different things. and. So we're, we're basically smoking, we're, we're yeah. you know, in a, in a sense. So that's why you want to be careful of these things, not to... Yeah, uh, treat ozone, is, uh, uh, the definition of ozone is a, uh, it is a blue gaseous, uh, uh, in its gaseous state, it is a toxic gas in high enough concentrations. It will kill uh, spiders, fleas, gnats, uh, things of that, it will kill us if we were exposed to enough ozone for a longer period of time. Yeah. That's why you don't want to go sitting in the car, like you were saying, you know, working away cleaning with the ozone generator going. Gotcha. But from the research I've done and from what you guys are saying now, wow, now it's really jumping up. From what you guys are telling me is that we've got this form, a UV, is simply just a cleaner version. It's, it's kind of like a VOC. Let's talk about VOCs for a second. Uh, the state of California and then everybody else fell in line with VOCs a couple years ago. Uh, a lot of products that we were used to using went off the market. We couldn't get them anymore because they just would not meet VOC requirements. Right. Basically what you, what, what, what you guys have come up with with this system is just a cleaner, safer version of ozone. Right. It's a step in a greener direction, if you want to coin the phrase, of ozone. It is a less dirty ozone. It has less toxins than the older traditional corona discharge version of creating ozone. Gotcha. Great point. Let's check this back in a second. We'll see where it's at. So go ahead. Yeah, it really just takes a couple of parts per million is, is the kill zone. Uh, that's what's going to do the, the lethal damage to the microorganisms in, a, in any interior. Um, along with, with cer under certain conditions with a corona discharge, unit, the higher the ozone production also is the higher production of those nasty nitrogen oxides we discussed earlier. So well, that's, again, that's, what, that's what worries me is because with so many people being sensitive, you know, we as a hundred years ago, uh, humanity, humans made their living outdoors, the majority of us, 90% of us gathered and grew and worked outdoors. Now the majority of us work indoors, and now we're realizing um, that the indoor environments, we, it's got its own health concerns. Absolutely. And so a lot of people, what we find in our own shops is that with such a wide variety of people, people are sensitive to different things. And so we want the cleanest, greenest, easiest to use systems in place, and chemically free is even better. And we want it, we want it in correct proportions. Uh, an umpteen billion parts per million of ozone is way overkill, but it's just not necessary. If you can only get 0 0.09 parts per million, that doesn't even reach the kill zone. No. So you're, you're either too big or too small. This particular unit that's on the inside of this BMW right now, it's not too big, it's not too small. Again, just like the Three Bears story, it's just right.